Well, hello everybody. Um, welcome to the internet. Um, this is Grumble Duke and Meadow. We're bringing you the first game we've actually ever cast from the Dota 2 Romanian Spring Cup. Um, we've got X game here coming up against Ueblest. Ueblest? I'm probably pronouncing that totally wrong. Um, as you can probably see from the top of the screen, we've had quite a lot of technical issues, a lot of DCs, a lot of lobby remakes. We are currently 18 minutes past the scheduled start time, so desperate to get going. I don't think this draft will take too long. And uh, yeah, as I said, I'm joined by Metamorphosis. How are you doing, man? Hello, I'm doing very well. Um, yeah, um, as we've mentioned, we've had a few delays. We do have a couple of DCs at the moment, but hopefully we'll, they'll reconnect. And um, they're very, very quick on the bands and the picks at the moment. Um, shall we go through them very quickly while they're doing it? Yeah, sure. So, uh, straight off the bat, we see a ban on Visage and a ban on Timber. Visage, as we all know, is is a great, great support. Uh, very good for early game lane harass. Very good for getting kills as well early game. So that's a a good ban on that team. And Timber Saw, um, who's an amazing off laner, um, he's incredibly hard to kill. He's incredibly mobile as well. Uh, from the radiant side, we can see Slark and Lycan. So. They've gone for, you know, a ganking hero and Slark. Lycan is also ganking. Uh, two very mobile heroes, especially with the Lycan ult as well and with the Slark ult. So it gives them that kind of extra movement speed, that ability to maneuver around the map as well. Um, picks, what do you think about the picks, Grumble? Um, it's quite interesting, actually. You, you, it really is true about Tier 1 heroes, Tier 2 heroes. I mean, the, the, the Lycan, the Ember Spirit, the Invoker, the Batrider, the Visage, I have seen all of them picked up in every single one of the past kind of five or six pro games I've uh, talked about, ten and all within the first ten go. bands or picks. It's it's just crazy. Um, yeah. Normally, though, yeah. um, the Bat Rider is getting banned and the Invoker is getting banned, so I actually haven't seen very much of them. Same with the Ember Spirit, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Um, the X game lineup, yeah, Dazzle's an amazing support. It makes me think they're probably going to have some proper diving heroes coming up. Um, I don't really think Ember Spirit fits that profile, but he'll. I mean, they've they've done a great thing when they banned the AA, in my opinion, because a big big issue with the AA ult is that it stops you from healing, from regening your health. So when you pick up someone like the Dazzle, you're you're clearly going for um, might be some tower diving every now and then. You need to be able to protect the carry, especially with the Ember, because he starts off with very very low base health and he's very gankable as well. So the AA ban is a really good ban because it kind of stops the other team from countering the Dazzle effectively. Hmm. Absolutely. Um, I mean, Shadow Grave, I think, is still going to be a very, very useful spell. But you're right, his his healing wave is going to be severely, severely limited by the AA ult. Um, I mean, I, what do you think we're going to see in terms of lanes over on Urblest? I mean, Batrider and Invoker both... Both heroes I'm used to seeing at mid, but it looks like at least one of them is going to have to be off lane with the morphine morphine taking the safe lane. Yeah, carry. yeah, I mean, it's I think I think Reserve. I think we they're going to set the invoker mid, and the bat rider is either going to go in the off lane or they might jungle him as well. So that's always an option with the bat rider because that's true. He's a he's an effective jungler. It's true that that devastating strategy of just kind of putting on firefly and flying over all the jungle camps at the same time, Radiant. so that they run out into the. The fiery, yeah, fiery yeah, death. He can, you can stack them very well, grab an early blink, and that could be effective. Or they might run him as a solo offlaner. I mean, we've seen him being run as a solo offlaner, and the person is playing him. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to be quite good, so they'll be able to manage in that kind of offlane position, get the early levels, get the ult very early on as well. So, yeah. um, I don't know exactly what they're going to do, because especially these are kind of. Um, very mm -hmm. carry pickups, very mid pickups in the early game, so it'll be interesting to see the supports that they pick up. I'm really liking Urbel's lineup with that disruptor, so I mean, I'm just looking at it. They can either initiate with Batrider and then just nuke down whoever they hook, or they can do a really nice team fight combo with the Invoker Tornado, land them in the disruptor ult in the static field, Radiant then Batrider just douses bad. them all in fire. Morphling can wave in and out of the. Oh, it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. Um, but Clockwork, I guess, giving X Game similar kind of potential in terms of lockdown for um, for X Game. This Ten is going to be to go. this is going to be a bloody battle, I think. Um, X Game also picking Five up a whole bunch seconds. of heroes. What do you reckon the last yeah, bands should I, be here? I agree. Uh, um, 
a big part of it is the power cogs. The power cogs are going to drain a lot of mana, especially from Disruptor early game, because he's very mana dependent. So um, we'll see how they run it, basically. Radiance Absolutely. I'm um, I'm really looking forward to this, particularly with the IO. Um, I just saw a, a Fnatic game yesterday. Fnatic's Ro Fnatic Rocks Kiss with uh, Fnatic running their like signature IO Tiny combo, and it was just devastating. Um, and they're something like seven wins, two losses in pro games when they've run that strategy. But IO obviously also very squishy and can be can be Ten tricky to use. Seconds to go. Hmm. I mean, who do you think yeah, he's going to be looking to link to? Five seconds. I think I think I think it will come up in their fifth pick. Is uh, I mean they might be running. The Ember mid, in which case they're gonna pick up someone for the Aya at this stage. Because mm. I'm assuming the Clockworks will solo off lane at this position. So we, we might be able to see their farm carry coming out at the moment. Someone who's kind of mana dependent, someone who can be repositioned with Aya and grab a kill very quickly. Yeah, so we'll definitely. see what X Games pull up at the moment. I mean, I think the. Yeah, the Ember Spirit could be mid or it could even be solo safe lane. Um, but I, I do feel at the moment that they're lacking someone who really takes advantage of the IO relocate. So I'm, Ten yeah, I think that will be the key pickup here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's going to be interesting to see what they pick up, especially that the fact that um, the Radiant picked up the Naga Siren. So that's a great, great shutdown and a great ult with her song. It kind of stops them from getting into or get them out of situations that they don't want to be in and. Um, stops the other team from ganking them, basically. Yeah, I mean, Ubels have just amazing team fight. As I'm looking at this, Disruptor plus Naga is. It doesn't really matter what you have on top of that. I think that can can net you a whole team fight. Um, but put on Morphling, Batrider, and Invoker, and that's a lot of damage. And it's OD. That is a very good pickup, I think. That's. L oh yes, he's good against Invoker or Batrider mid. Um, Got to be a little bit careful against the bat. He's great TPing in behind them as long as you're uh, careful. Ember can go safely and carry and get his uh, crits and stuff up. That is going to be, that is going to be special. But of course now we're going to have to wait for these. Are those actual DCs? Do you think? I don't know. Yes. It looks yeah, like yeah, we have, we do wait, have but, four DCs. At the moment. But Dazzle paused the game. And yeah, it's a bug. I think I think everyone's actually in. Very strange. Very, very strange. <laughs> what the hell, Ice Toad? Well, <clears> as, long as, lo as long as they're all in and they're all connected, that's fine. We're, we'll be happy dealing with a picture bug as long as everyone is in the game and we can get it rolling, so I don't think that will be a big problem. <laughs> yeah, it, it it, it's 2v4. Teams... It's 2v4, yeah. <laughs> legit, right? It, it, might, it might allow the team some strategy pausing every now and then. On the pretense of yeah, possibly. Oh, oh, oh no, Ember Spirit. Oh, I, I was actually about to make a joke about Ember Spirit disconnecting from the game, and then this happens. Much I mean, pings. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's it's a great pickup with the Dazzle and the Io for the Ember because um, Ember has is very mana dependent. He has very low base health, so he does need a lot of protection if you're going to farm him up. Um, unlike other farm carries who do have uh, kind of stuns and escapes and other things and uh, higher strength, higher base health or good mana that allows them to avoid being ganked, um, the amber very early on tends to be incredibly, incredibly squishy. So, you know, yeah. I mean, that puts kind of the dazzle on the eye into a better perspective. I mean, it makes sense in that sense, definitely. The, I mean, it, it, it's also true though that the once the Ember hits 6 and gets Remnant, he'll be very, very hard to gank. They'll, they'll have to have Disruptor in there, I think, or an Orchid on Invoker. Um, yeah, so, I, I, th I think once he hits 6, then we're going to see the, the Dazzle probably rotating to the Clockwork, and the Io, I think, rotating to the uh, OD. Yeah, I think the thing is, uh, uh, Ubalist, uh, the Radiant, have a lot of control. Especially with the disruptor static uh, static storm and static fi kinetic field, the glimpse, the the naga and snare, which also gives true sight, uh, the song as well, the bat rider. There's there's a lot of kind of 
AOE control that's coming out of that team. So they're definitely, definitely going up for team fights. Yeah. Um, so it will be interesting to see how they initiate, how they play that. Are they going to join up on fish towers very early on? Or are they going to sit back and farm? Mm. I mean, that OD is going to have to be very, very careful. He's He's probably the most... I think critical player in the match because he's going to be very gankable. They've got a lot of ways to shut him down with disarms on Invoker, Naga, Disruptor. Um, they've got the Batrider Lasso, but he's going to be the main DPS for uh, for XG up until the point when um, Ember Spirit gets his items farmed. Yeah, yeah, and he's also giving them a lot of control. You're exactly right. Um, with Astro and Prison Prince as well, that will effectively stop Invoker from being able to rotate and gank because he will sap all of his intelligence so Invoker won't be able to cast any of his spells and Invoker is very much spell dependent um, if he can't cast any spells then he is ineffective in those situations yeah. so it will be interesting to see how the mid battle goes I, I think that mid battle is definitely going to favor OD definitely I mean it's just I've done it so many times against Proton that's why and Pro Proton's a better mid than me, so it tends to go quite even. But if I'm going even against Proton, it means I've got a hero advantage. Um, yeah. It, it, Invoker just think... needs so much, needs so much mana. Um, he can be shut down fairly easily, kind of, you know, in, in the mid. His real danger comes from being able to roam and gank. But for that, he do, he really does need mana. A big part of it as well. I was I'm wondering whether this Invoker is going to go kind of past Wex Exhort. Is you know, is he gonna go for high damage? Is he gonna go for disable and spells? Oh, he picked up, picked up. I in, I thought he picked up. Um, he might go, he might go quas, but we'll see about that. Let's see, do you want to introduce uh, Uberbelst? Yes, I will introduce Uberbelst. Um, at the moment, we have Alex on the Naga Siren, Vil on the Morphling, uh, W Boy on the Invoker, uh, Dota Two Sky at the Bat Rider and EDE at the Disruptor as well. In terms of um, the item pickups that they have, uh, Invoker has just gone with a single salve at the moment, which is... Oh, he picked <laughs> up his other items, a couple of iron branches as well, and a few healings. Uh, the Batrider, on the other hand, a salve, clarity and boots, so he's gone for movement speed early game, so that's quite interesting. Disruptor, warding, um, Tangos, Clarities, kind of the standard support items. Yeah. Naga is the same thing. She got herself a stout shield as well for early game harass. Looks On like she's... the X Games. Sorry. Yeah, looks like she's going off lane. Um, I'll just <laughs> introduce X Game quickly. Um, we got Mikasiru on the IO. Um, Mamanek at on the uh, Ember Spirit. I'm wondering if he's got any items. No, unfortunately he doesn't. Um, Kelma there on Let's the Dazzle. No items on Dazzle either. These aren't very fancy teams so far. Chichi though on the Outworld Devourer. He's looking quite nice. I especially like the helmet there. Dragon Forge to stare. I, I think that's appropriate. And uh, Fall Without You, down on the clockwork. Um, and yeah, you, you already had a look on the opening items. I can't see anything that is too surprising other than Io uh, rushing a bottle for the for the support potential. He hasn't picked up a single thing. What do you think of that? The, the late the, I mean, like, um, it can work for the Io, especially that means it gives him more heals, not only to him, but it gives the the Ember Spirit, the mana and the health that he needs for the game and like considering we have a tri-lane against a tri-lane at the moment um, it, it might be an intelligent pickup, especially as I've mentioned because of the Ember being so incredibly squishy and so kind of weak in the early laning phase of the game until he hits level 6 um, Yeah sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to catch up on the uh on the discussion. It seems to be that people are not getting gold for last hits. Um, and we might need to remake again. Wow, that's 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 unfortunate. Alright, well um, I'll keep the stream running and yeah, we'll we'll get into it shortly. Oh, why does this always happen? There seems to be an awful lot of problems going on at the moment. Um, it's quite unfortunate as well because there's another one coming up in the Romanian Cup in just half an hour. 
Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. This uh, this actually picks up a little bit. Volvo, Volvo, please fix. I mean, I guess the only upside is the uh, the future matches, which um, which are of course going to be slightly put in danger by this. They will also be affected by the delay. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Everything will be well. Meta's in. Teams joining up very very quickly. I'm wondering if we might just go for all pick. Yeah, AP. You don't want to have to go through the whole draft again. You just want to pick your things. Um, so yeah, we'll be back in very very shortly. Again, for anybody watching on stream, this is the point in time when very frequently my uh, my Dota crashes. If it does, I'll just load it up again. I'll be in very very shortly. It doesn't take me long, especially not in an all pick game. Metamorphosis has connected to the game. Looks like you're pink in this game. Hello. Hey, man. Um, Am I pink? I think so. Don't type anything, because admins don't like that. But yeah, I think you're pink. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> going to type anything. I was like, I'm not doing. I, Just I type. I'm that pink. That I'm a player. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Um. So yeah, waiting for the all pick pickups. Just got one to go. I think. Um, in the laning phase was quite interesting as well, because we saw I wonder if they're running the same lanes we can discuss them once they get into the lanes because they ran the invoker solo lane safe lane against the clockworks yeah and yeah so and they're, it was a morphing laning, mid the morphing I, mid yeah, yeah so we were that just about was, to start talking about it it's unfortunate because now of course the teams know what the other one's planning so yeah I, I'm worried about the uh, I'm wondering if they're going to run the same thing, or are they both going to go for reverse psychology and switch up their lanes so we'll end up with the exact same lanes <laughs> from the opposing sides? Yeah, or... that's, that's very possible. I mean, OD against Morphling, I think OD has an edge there, personally. Um, I know Morphling's great and all, but his range is very low. Without his intelligence, he's not yeah. able to get away from any danger using uh, Waveform or, or Strength Morph. Um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, he's he's gonna struggle. But but Morphling is is very much mana dependent early in the game because he has a very very small mana pool, and one waveform would eat up so much of his mana. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess that that's part of why they're doing this build, why they're picking up those characters, because he 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 might not rotate to gank. He might just kind of sit mid and farm up as much as he can. Yeah. Um, and then we might see a rotation from him. Um, but basically they're just trying to get the early levels of Morphling rather than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it looks like we are going with all of the same lanes as well. I don't know whether that's actually a rule in the tournament for situations like this or whether everyone's just happy with it. Um, but I'm quite looking forward to it. So we've got CK, uh, sorry, Clockwork, running up against Invoker on the on the uh, bot lane. That's W Boy against Fall Without You. We've got OD against Morphling, and we already discussed that one a bit. I think that's going to be a good lane. I think Morphling's going to be struggling a little bit. And it looks like the tri lanes are going to run up against each other. And Let's in addition to that, it looks like the ward positions are also going to be identical. ED Dota going to grab that Invis rune, I think. Invisibility! Yeah, picks it up just to get away from the IO. The IO there could have got a bit of damage in and then uh, chained over to Dazzle quite easily. Yeah, but I mean, at, at this early stage in the game, I mean, the IO's not going to do that much damage. He hits at 47, no. he has no items, so... Um, yeah, I can understand that he didn't want to harass because he doesn't want to be harassed um, at the stage that he's at. Yeah. Let's see, let's, fingers crossed, people will get gold. So we've got Batrider, Naga, and uh, and Disruptor here running up against Ember Spirit, Dazzle, and Io. Yep, looks like gold is being earned. Oh dear, lots of stacks immediately going up on Ember Spirit. Um, yeah, I think he got um, those two last hits, but oh dear. And look, he's he's already below them, fifty percent health at the moment. I mean that that tri lane is gonna phase the Ember Spirit out, especially with the 
with the sticky napalm, especially with the uh, Riptide as well, which reduces your armor by two. Yeah. So, I mean, Ember is going to be completely zoned out. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the danger of Batrider in a tri lane. You know, you land sticky napalm on everyone, and uh, and suddenly you're you're just doing so much damage to the whole field. Taking a lot of harass there, though. I think being a bit over aggressive on the Ember Spirit. Because, of course, uh, the one thing you can say about Radiant is they don't have any natural heals in lane. They're going to be relying on regen items. Yeah, they're going to be relying on the regen and the disables that they already have. But, I mean, you can see there's so much harass coming out at the moment. Um, the Dire side are just kind of backing all the way underneath their towers, and none of them are able to farm at the moment. I was actually wrong about the it, last hits. Um, Maimoneka on the uh, Ember Spirit actually... Zero for zero, so that's not what they wanted from that lane at all. They're having a really hard time. Um, and Morphling and OD, OD's just caught up a little bit, but Morphling actually dominating that lane in terms of last hits. It was a little bit more pronounced before, yeah, I mean, now it's 10 for 9. A big part of it, if you look at Morphling's damage at this stage in the game, he's doing 74, 74 yeah. per hit compared to the OD 71, which is pretty much even. Oh! oh. Oh, the shame of missing first blood. Excellent play there. I would imagine that's really just taking advantage of the um, the massive heals they've got. They can afford to, to take her ass. They were just playing possum yeah. until uh, until they were ready to really go for a kill. And a nice side pull here, so they're going to eat up a whole bunch of experience. Oh, yep, here come the Radiant, though. They want to contest the uh, XP and gold gain. They've got Disruptor down there in the river, pretty much just trying to pick up stuff by being in the area. Anything to say about the bot lane? We actually haven't looked down there at all yet. I've been, I've been actually having a look at it and the Invoker went Quas Wex so that will enable him to get a bit of harass with the with the Cold Snap, with the Tornado so and and we can see he's, he's had the advantage in terms of the last hits as well. He's on 16 to 6 compared to the Clockworks 10 and 0. And actually so, doing better than the OD. I mean, they, they they really are finding their farm. I think um, Radiant getting much better farm here, but of course also losing losing first blood. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect them to lose that first blood, considering how much control they seem to put at the early stages in the game. But I guess you're right. The the Dyer were just kind of waiting back, holding, biding their time until they managed to get a kill. DD rune just spawning top. Um, bottle on OD. No bottle on Morphling. So uh, OD would really, really benefit from that, I think. He needs to get up there as soon as he can. Actually, three bottles coming out on the Dire side. IO, Clockwork, and OD all carrying bottles, and none on the Radiant. Big team fight going on top. Looks like Ember Spirit might be in trouble. Batrider keeping up the harass. Ember Spirit might get down. Yep, three stacks of sticky napalm on him. Oh, He's trying to they're going in, but there's Shadow Grave. Shadow That'll Grave. make sure he can get the TP. But the supports, this IO went down. Io and Dazzle. This is going to be a bloody lane. You know, yeah, it's a, I it's mean, a this, I, I guess a big part of it was was payback for the the first blood, basically. And yeah, I mean, you saw them. They tried to extend slightly, but the damage output. That's oh, and mid from the bat rider. Oh, that's coming out from so the close. Marker. That was incredibly close. Morphling picked up a bottle, got that double damage, and came in and almost killed OD, who's salving up though. So no big whoop. Um, but he's going to be finding it even harder now to get any control in that lane. Dyer's and there's the replicate. Being attacked. Oh, an invoker. EMP. Cold snap. He might get a kill. Oh, there it is. Did I hear a squeak? I'm surprised invoker didn't just hit those cogs, to be honest. Especially now that they only take, what, two hits or something to uh, be destroyed? Yeah, a big, a big. Oh dear, they're there. going on. Uh, they're going on bat right top. A lot of damage coming in very quickly, and no, yep, down very quickly. No, no innate heals in that tri lane. So, uh, you know, the, the radiant have the capacity for a lot more aggression, I guess. But yeah, if it goes wrong, like their bat rider was just way ahead of the uh, of the other two in lane, they will just get pounced on. Stop you. 
Yeah, as, as you've mentioned, you're exactly right. These are going to be incredibly bloody battles, and it will be very interesting to watch as well. I mean, even the Clockworks has to be incredibly careful against the Invoker, who's gone Crosswex, so he has a lot of disables and a lot of control as well within that lane. Absolutely. OD picking up a haste rune. That can be quite a useful one for OD. Maxing Astrid in prison as well, so let's have a quick look at Morphling's mana. Yeah, 200 mana. He He's just got enough for a waveform now, but if, I mean, he can't really be attribute but switching at all. Yeah, I mean, that's that's all he can do is just have one waveform, and that's it, basically. Aye. Oh, Batrider moving in on top lane, but Io spots him out. But is spotted out in turn by Naga. There it is. No, facing no, the supports out. To the bat rider. Excellent play. Io in real trouble from Naga. Naga's going on this Io. He gets shallow grave by the dazzle, so he yeah. might be able to survive. Uh, oh, and he gets well. out by. Oh, he almost gets out with a very, very nice, uh, nice link there. Naga in we real see trouble a though. From the clock here, and the clock might kill this Naga as well. And Ember's already gone down, so. Uh, he really needed the rotation there, but oh no, a blink into a beautiful, beautiful static and field. And uses haste, he's coming in. Wow. Oh, and a beautiful ult to kill the Batrider just as he's about to TP out. And Disruptor has no mana and is really now just trying to waste the time of the other team. Um, that was messy and it's actually kind of hard to tell who came off on top there. Radiant definitely getting the most of the experience graph, but Dyer's that would have been an awful lot more in their favor if it wasn't for some very quick rotations there from Dyer. Yeah, I mean, they had they had amazing quick rotation, and that haste stream helped the OD being able to come over there, and he used his ult to grab the kill on the bat right there before he TP'd out, so that was definitely worth it, I think. Mm. And it looks like uh, Clockwork and OD looking to set up a Gank, possibly? Oh no, the Clockwork doesn't have the mana. In, oh, look at that Courier on the Radiant. That is a, a flying rainbow llama being ridden by a wizard. I, I'm not even is joking. Is it a llama? I thought that was a unicorn. Oh no, it's a unicorn. It, it is a unicorn. You are right. Wow, that's crazy. Um, and a quick look at the Dire Courier. Nice little hawk. Nothing too, uh, nothing too fancy. Um, Dyer here finishing off. Was that a, a stacked camp? I imagine. I can't, Indeed, yes. I can't see them wait, wasting their time on that for just one. Not all three of them. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I mean, the, the other problem. That, all the meantime, the the invoker is pretty much getting free farm in this lane because we saw a rotation from the clock. He had to go back to kind of heal, and he's walking back to his lane. <gasps> so look what's coming out to him. Kind of Hand of Midas. Midas. He's just got that finished nine minutes in, so not the quickest, but he also already has phase boots. Um, I, I think that's very, very good for him. That I was going to say, that's kind of the downside for uh, U U-Rest's um, kind of strategy here, because they had to rotate an awful lot of heroes up there, and they may be ahead on XP and gold, but... Ah, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little... I mean, it, it's it's going to be good. If you it's look be at good. the gold graph and the XP graph, u are ahead on both of them. There might be another kill here on the... Oh, Batrider gets out within an inch of his life. OD taking it... Oh! <laughs> Ember Spirit taking an awful lot of harass there, getting the heal just in time. Invoker rotation so far hasn't been able to do anything. They need to... Nothing to stop the TP out there. Batrider for Dazzle. I think given that Batrider's been getting quite a lot of the farm in that top lane, um... Yeah, he's definitely the, the the one getting the farm in that top lane. That's definitely better for um, for XG. Yeah, indeed. And we saw a rotation. You can see a few pings coming out uh, with regards to the Invoker saying we need to gank this Invoker because he's been getting free farm. Whoa, very, very strange tether there from Io. Seemed to take him right away from the tower and towards the... Uh, right into the enemy heroes. I think there might have been some kind of autocast that went horribly, horribly wrong. Um... That that was just sad. Poor Io. That's all I have to say. Yeah, um, as I was saying, if you look at the graph and the XP difference, because um, the Dire X Games have had so many rotations, um, they're starting to slowly. Oh, big gank here going on on the OD. 
Glimpse back into the static field. Lots of damage coming in and a waveform to finish it off. The TP coming in to defend is cancelled. <laughs> that was a beautiful play there by these guys grouping up mid. And they'll be able to rock that tower down. Question is though, will Dyer be able to push down top? Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Radiance top tower is under siege. Oh, and we saw the bat rider. The bat rider is rotating bot to farm it up, and there is absolutely no one and nothing to contest this at the moment. Yeah, the clockworks has had so many rotations that he's not able to farm effectively at the moment. And I think the bot tower is going to go down as well. Ember. Uh, yeah, well, so is top. I, I'm really hoping, but yeah, you're right. Two tier ones for one tier one is is very obviously not not a good exchange. Oh, and Naga coming up with Song. Actually, they're going to make a defense of this. There's a Song. Are they going to TP to defend this? We have the disruptor. There we go, disruptor. Does he have his ult? I don't think so. They used that on the OD just a moment ago. But Io taking an awful lot of damage. They've got the movement speed now linked to uh, Ember. But Ember is glimpsed back. This is dangerous. This is very very dangerous. Beautiful way for him to finish there. Clockwork uh, flare coming in, but I don't think he's going to find anything. That was that was a great, great block as well from the Naga. She tried to creep block the Ember Spirit in so that they could do as much damage as possible before he could um, walk away with his ult from this. Indeed. Um, looks like OD wants to make a bit of a play on mid. Radiance middle tower is under attack. And you can see the OD at the moment. He had he it's only got boots of speed. He is rushing a mech at the moment, considering how the team fights are going. So uh, siege. You definitely have a lot of heals that are going to come out from the from the dire side when it comes to the team fight situations, but because there is so much control of the map that is happening, um, they are they are losing these team fights towards the Naga Song, the Disruptor, uh, Static Field, and even the Batrider as well. So it will be interesting to see how they try to take this back. Absolutely. I mean, it, the the leads that. Uh, how, how are you pronouncing this, this team? I like the way you're pronouncing it. I'm going to copy you. I'm not familiar with these guys. u Bells. Alright. u Bells. u Bells are just like continually increasing their domination over this. But beautiful uh, deny there by Disruptor. Ember wants to come in and go for it though. Silent static field. It's not going to be enough. But they're now within the TP range of the tier 2. There's a rotation here. Here comes the Invoker. But it's still 4 on 3 in favor of the Dire. Um, but Jechi almost down on OD. The level's really coming into effect here. Naga, though, the only one going up against three of the dire heroes, gets caught out without her team. Not enough damage done quickly enough. Morphling waveforms in. He's going to be trying to uh, basically just get the attention off, and he's pretty much going to succeed. But Clockwork is here now. This could be exactly what XG need. Io looking very, very low, but get to heal from Dazzle. I'm surprised only one person went down in that entire fight. I really am. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was expecting for there to be a lot more fireworks, a lot more deaths, but uh, both teams held it together very, very nicely. That they did. Oh, they're moving up. Invoker, I think, hoping to find someone, but doesn't. Yeah, and like, Invoker's got his full staff already, he's going across work, so... We'll see a lot of that Tornado EMP initiation coming out from him. The Bat Rider has got his blink as well, so we might see a few initiations coming from the Bat as well. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the the fact that the only Midas in the game has gone on to Invoker kind of makes me worried for XG here. I mean, it kind of just means that no matter what happens, they, they, they've got to do more than just catch up. They've got to push ahead because that Invoker's farm is, is going to be accelerating. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at the last hits per table, Invoker is sitting at the top, followed by a Morphling, and there's a th oh, almost over a 20 hit oh, difference. Oh, Naga oh, Song! Naga Song comes in. I might, we might see another rotation here. I don't think they've got enough. Yep, they're backing out. I think that was a waste. Let's have a quick look. Yep, Batrider's TP is on cooldown. Morph does not have a TP, and the Replicate is not in the right place. Um, Invoker, yeah. Is he going to initiate EMP Tornado? There it is. Lots of mana drain on a very mana hungry team. But the OD 
aura that's kind of offsetting that. Gonna get down here. Even if, yes, Shadow Grave is forced out, that's actually quite significant. Manages to get the TP back. XG here in quite a tricky situation. I'm Does not sure. Is the going to get caught out of position at the moment? Nope, Batrider picks up the clockwork, drags him back, almost leaves him in the trees. Raining are chasing very hard. Um, Ember gets glimpsed back. Just remnants out again immediately, but gets caught in a tornado. The chase is on. New Belt's really looking for kills here. Adaptive strike there on the uh, on the OD, and there's a remnant just sitting there, promising revenge. But uh, yeah, XG fully on the run. I think they only lost OD, which is um, which is acceptable. Not good, definitely not good, but acceptable. I mean, I when you, a, yeah, a, a big part of it as well. I mean, the disruptor glimpse is doing a lot of work. Oh, it is. Belt set the moment. is oh, it really attack. is. One, this one is interesting. I relocate. Balancing how little I care oh dear, the wrong neighborhood, buddy. Wrong neighborhood. He just got glimpsed back. Two. Oh, and he's dead. He had two seconds left before he was. Uh... I, I love that from the disruptor. They rotated to grab a gank, and he just glimpsed the ember all the way back. <laughs> Good plays. Good plays. Fancy stuff. What I was actually, because I actually had a game yesterday, the the Fnatic Rocks Kiss one, where there was also a Disruptor and an IO on opposite teams, and I was saying what I really want to see is the IO come in with somebody, and then for the whoever they came in with to immediately get Gilms back, and I think that's what we just saw. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it was a great glimpse. It it kind of uh, protected Ubilis from from any possible gank. They grabbed a the kill as well. It's a shame about I'm looking at that Sentry Ward at the bottom river, and it, it just like. It's just half an inch. Oh, that is missing. The 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 other sentry. They're both missing each other. They're literally on the outside of the border of each other, which is quite interesting. That is really close. That is really really close. Sorry, we are having a couple of issues with our casters on the other games. Um, David E. Stevenson just did a great cast of one of the other um, one of the other round ones uh, games in this. So check out his channel, David Y. Stevenson. Um, the Morphling is out of position at the moment. Oh he dear, and a DD rune, a is DD rune on down? the clockwork. Oh yes, and that's a mega kill streak. So almost 700 gold there for Ember Spirit. Now there is, of course, the fact that Ember Spirit has been proving recently that late game he is currently one of the most OP heroes in the entire game. It, it, it's that simple, especially against team fight oriented teams like Ubelst, who are going to be hanging together, they're going to be you know, trying to set up kind of Naga invoker combos and things like that. Once he gets his items up, a single sleight of fist can wipe out an entire team if the crits go off right and consecutively. Indeed, and the range on the sleight of fist, it just keeps increasing. Uh, the radius of it in increases as well, and the it it's effectively becomes like an AOE ult. And an excellent call here, going um, for the for the Roche. That he has. Only the damage just just keeps scaling because it's it's just regular right click attacks. So as he gets you know Daedalus and Battle Fury. Anyway, um, they're going for the for the Roche now, and I think they're going to get him basically uncontested. And this is a good plan. This is kind of what they need to do to to get a bit of presence in this game. Tornado comes in, but that's not going to throw him off. Oh. I'm interested to see whether Clockwork's going to get any last hits. Oh, no, he doesn't. He misses a wave completely. That was unfortunate. Ember Spirit with Aegis, but uh, he still needs to finish off his Battle Fury. I, I'm not entirely sure that would have been... I suppose it is the best item, because he needs to be thinking about farming for the next 10 minutes regardless. Um, but yeah, he needs a damage item before he can really start being effective. I think the Drums of Endurance, given the way they're having to play this game, might be made a little bit redundant. They really wanted that to be going out on someone like, I don't know, possibly the Clockwork, even the OD, and then Ember could just be focusing on his damage items. Because he needs farm, boy. Indeed, but I've, I've seen the Drums pick up, because uh, you're forgetting a big, big part of it is 
it gives him that early bracer in game. It gives him that slightly bit of mana as well early in game. Well, he was. It's just he was playing in a tri lane. Like maybe it was too aggressive of them. Maybe they were. Anyway, yeah. Let, let, let's talk about this because massive action here. You both wiping out Dazzle and Io, so there's no heals on the map right now for for XG. The OD ult comes out, isn't able to finish anybody off. You both on the retreat, but all heroes still currently up. Beautiful static field there. Unfortunately, not going to be enough because he was imprisoned at the same time. And uh, there we have Naga teleporting out, absolutely terrifying. And Morphling just trying for a quick backdoor on the tower. Morphling, are they going to grab the Morphling? Replicates out. He's got the most escapes in the game. Hate him even more than Puck. <laughs> it's it's interesting as well because we see he's gone for a Ghost Scepter, so he's going to change that into an Ethereal Blade. So hitting someone for that much agility late game, that will be a one hit kill on the supports basically. It's Shotgun so, Morph, guys. Shotgun Morph. The Dazzle here is out of position. He should have been spotted by the Invoker. It's interesting that there's actually still a tier 1 up. This has been such a bloody game, but of course this lane was just Invoker against Clockwork. Not too much action. I think only one kill going off in the early game. Ember Spirit bravely rushing into the... Oh, and the Clockwork hook misses! He's dived, but Clockwork isn't with him. If Clockwork had managed to land that hook, I think that would have been... Absolutely devastating. But unfortunately, there's uh, Naga and Batrider are both taking down the tier 2. There goes the flare, but. It's not a good one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if. I think if uh, XG had managed to get land that uh, Clockwork hook there on 4 without you, and then have the Ember Spirit initiate like he did, that would have been devastating. They would certainly have killed the Invoker there. Um, that would have made it yeah. worthwhile, I, mean, I think, if they, if they could have netted a couple of kills. A couple kills. Yeah, if they grabbed a couple of kills, plus the tier 1, that would have been a, f a fair trade for a tier 2. But they didn't mm. grab any, any kills at all. That they did not. Very sad. And, and they they're have, not really... They have very good ward coverage here uh, at the Radiant Jungle. They can see every rotation that's going to come in or come out from the Radiant Jungle. Yeah, but none on their own. It's almost like they've just decided to abandon Dyer's all the external towers. Power I mean, there's siege. not really anything they're going to be able to do quick enough to save this top one. That TP. Ember Spirit's coming in, but he's currently massively outnumbered. I think ooh, I think uh, Ubelst could easily have taken that tower. I, th I don't think... I mean, the Ember Spirit has his Battle Fury at the moment. They, they really don't want to lose Morphling for that at the moment. So very true, was, very very true. But they had, they had, they actually, even when the Ember came in, they still had three heroes around that tower. Um, they had Naga and uh, Naga and uh, 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 Naga and Batrider were both hanging around in the jungle. So I'm not saying they could have killed Ember, especially since he's got the Aegis, but um, I think they could have put on enough pressure to take the tower. It's now in danger of being deniable next time a siege creep gets to it. But who knows, I'm wrong, it didn't happen. Maybe if they tried it, they well, would all we'll, have exploded. We'll see, I mean, they're, they're pushing as a five-man, they're pushing mid. I, I think, yeah, we should be able to see rotations coming out from the Invoker and the Disruptor, or are they just going to push this tower and take a Tier 2 for a Tier 2? I think it might be two Tier 2s for a Tier 2. I think uh, XG are seriously in danger here of losing all of their external towers. Meanwhile, with the bottom tower down, we're gonna have Disruptor and um, sorry, Disruptor and Invoker both oh, TPing in. There's a Naga Salt. The Dazzle's dead very, very quickly. He's not really who they wanted to catch though, but there's the OD as well. Io gets netted. Clockworks come in, possibly a little bit late to the party here, but looks like he might be able to finish off Naga Siren. Nope. The uh, the rest of Ubelfs managed to finish off the entire Dire team bar Clockwork, so they're now gonna be coming in as well. Not good. Murder spree. Over. Not good at all. They even managed to get the second kill on the uh, Ember there after the Aegis popped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, as I mentioned, a big part of it is is that E Blade on the Morphling came came in very very handy in grabbing that OD kill. He he basically just two hit killed him. Yeah, um, and finished off with a waveform, and then he yeah um, he E bladed him and 
VOD just melted within that team fight. And when you don't have the the only kind of control hero from the die side being able to join those team fights, being able to astro imprison, to land his uh, sanity's eclipse, then unfortunately, you know, the disruptor, the naga, the bat rider, they're they're exuding all of their control without someone to check them in line. Absolutely, we're almost up to twenty thousand XP ahead um, for you, Belst. Almost the same on the gold as well. Glimps back from the clockwork out of his own cogs, leaves the uh, the XG attempt to at kills here very very patchy. Do manage to finish off the bat rider though. Good job there. And looks like they oh they're getting close to the morph who just jumps in, tries for a shotgun on the OD but a nice in prison. And yeah, he he almost died with that one. He was on on less than twenty five percent health. Indeed, but I think the Invoker and Disruptor might be in serious trouble here. Oh, no, there's OD. Naga's come in. I didn't see Morphling coming up from behind, just tearing through everything he can get his hands on. Finishes off the Ember. Only Clockwork left alive. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to stay that way for long. Alright, Meta. I was, <laughs> I was just about to ask you. Because I don't want to have to answer that question. Um, I mean... I really don't think they can't. I mean, if you just look at, yeah, I mean, not only in terms of the goal, the XP graph, you, can, you look at the loss hits as well. It's just, u are, are just exuding so much control within this team fight. The initiation with the song, and then Disruptor just walks in, static fields and static storms to as many heroes as possible, and you, you can't do anything because you're silenced for that duration. And the kind of the damage output that's coming out. Oh, nice oh. blink from Batrider finishes off Dazzle. <laughs> Ember Spirit gets caught in a uh, caught in a static, but that's not likely to bother him. Not with remnants. I mean, they're still fighting. I mean, what they have to do is is farm up that Ember Spirit. That's that's the the fairly simple thing. Um, Odin still needs to start working on a vice. It, that's what they need to do. They needed to do it quite a long time ago, and I'm not sure if they're going to be able to. But that's what needs yeah, to like, happen. How are you gonna How are you gonna escape from the static field and the static storm? How are you gonna escape from the EMP, which drains all your mana, and the tornado? How are you gonna escape from the Naga song? How are you gonna escape from the lasso and the bat rider? All of these things, as we've mentioned, as you know, when we when we saw that lineup, it's just it kind of. Taking AOE control of any team fight situation, and they're doing it so brilliantly. And the other heroes are just, you know, X Games are just m melting towards that kind of AOE team fight. They feel confident enough for a smoke gank, though. Yep, they're moving down into the uh, into the radiant jungle. They've used their observer there. I think they probably spotted out Invoker. And then moving in, of course, Morphling though also beginning to move into the bot lane. This is going to be. I think. I think both teams. Are this is going to be tricky. Here. here it comes. It's Ember Spirit jumping on the uh, Invoker who lands an EMP and a tornado. Beautiful timing there. Ember Spirit with no mana. But oh no! Here come the rest of the Radiant team. Cogs used there basically only traps his own teammates. And as we're saying, I mean, XG is doing a fairly good job of surviving. He's he's the most survivable. Just got another kill there on the uh, on the invoker. But Ubel's just doing a great job in chasing down. And yeah, GG as, as called by the OD. I mean, yeah, I mean, you you saw that the moment that the Ember initiated. The tornado oh. MP went down, and, and Ember ended up with no mana whatsoever within that team fight, and he couldn't do anything. Yeah, I mean that that was just devastating. They even had enough farm. They they were just buying boots, travel on everyone by the end there, just so that they could get in. And yeah, GG. Um, I'm not sure if I'm not sure what's going to be happening with the next match in this tournament, just because there was so much uh, fuss trying to get this one sorted. But yeah, thank you very much for being on, Matter. And yeah, we'll see. Thank you, thank you for having me, and I, I look forward to the next match, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed.